So I've made a video before about covered pockets and when I made that video I was playing under world rules and there's been a couple of comments on that video about um, oh I didn't think you were allowed to do that or isn't that a loss of frame um, and those people are generally referring about different rule sets. So what I've decided to do here is cover the subject again but under international rules and the way you deal with covered pockets under international rules is completely different. Um, than under world rules. And it's one of the reasons that international rules is far more of an attacking game because covering pockets doesn't have the value that it does in world rules where it can tie things up and bog the game down quite a lot. So when it comes to a covered pocket, maybe somebody might do it on purpose or it might be accidental. So say um, the yellow player here is just going for a, to pop this ball down into the corner pocket and they slightly misjudge it. I may end up covering this pocket from the red player. Now, the first thing to talk about is obviously how covered is the pocket. Now, in this particular example here, there is still a gap here, down here, that we could pot a ball through. Can't pot, well, actually, we probably could get that off the jaw, but if it was at more of an angle, we could get that. If the ball's a little bit further this way, then that pocket is covered and this ball won't go in there. It could be right in the jaws there. It could even be closer to the ball and we're still sort of effectively covering that pocket from this ball. So let's put it, let's put it about there. So in this situation, you've got probably four options really. The first option, um, which is not really what I'm gonna cover here, is obviously at some other point in the game, you could maneuver yourself over to this side and pop the ball into another pocket. Um, there are always other places to, to pop balls, but that's not really what we're talking about here. So the three remaining options are, um, the first one is to use the loss of turn shot. Now what the loss of turn shot is, is as long as you make a legal shot and hit your ball first, you are allowed to pop one of your opponent's balls and you simply lose your turn. It's not a foul, play just passes to your opponent. So we can use that to our advantage if we want to sort out a covered pocket. So, um, all we need to do to do that is contact a red first and then pot this ball. We can do that in two ways. We can either play the red into the yellow or we can flick off the red and send the cue ball into the yellow to pot the ball, whichever works best for your situation. Now I'm going to play off the red here, and the reason for that is when you're using loss of turn, you've got to remember that you're handing the table back to your opponent. So ideally, you'd like to leave it as difficult for them as possible. So if we can flick off this red and pot this yellow and leave the cue ball in this corner, we're not really leaving much of a shot for the yellow player. They've got nothing they can really get at up here. These balls are all blocking each other back in that direction. So it's a fairly safe shot. It still has to be considered about what we're doing. But so all we're trying to do, we're not trying to hit anything hard. We want to just flick off the red, a slightly awkward cueing, but I'm just gonna catch the edge of the red as finely as possible and just run it into the yellow ball. And we've cleared the yellow ball out of the way. Play passes to the yellow player, but they can't pot these balls that way, they can't pot there, and they haven't got an easy first shot. So yes, we've lost turn, but we've cleared that pocket nice and early in the game while there's still other problems on the table to sort out, and sorted out that covered pocket. So that's one option. Now another option is, um, say we ended up in a different position or we played a couple more shots, is to, is to pot a ball and then to pot this as well. If we pot one of our balls and then one of our opponent's balls, we're still in control of the table. It's not a loss of turn. So if I found myself in a position like this, I could pot this red to the middle and run down into that yellow and I'm still in control. Now, 
there are issues with this. Let's, let's have a go and see what happens and then and we can explain some of those. Okay, so we've potted our ball. We've then potted that ball and cleared the pocket and we're still in control of the table, which is good. Um, it's better than the previous version because we're still at the table. The only issue with that is that we've also then got to think about position for ourselves. And when you're playing a ball off one of your balls, traveling over distance, then coming off this, it's very hard to judge exactly where that ball is going to hit the yellow and where it's going to end up. And if we have a look now on the reds, okay, we've got a, we've got a long shot up here. We haven't really got a huge amount else and we've not got great position. So you, if you're going to use that technique, you have to think about where the cue ball is going to end up because it's your turn next. So it's important that you're you know, in control of the cue ball um, and don't end up making life difficult for yourself. Having said that, you're still in control of the table, so you could play a snooker or something in return. So that's two options. Now, the third option, um, similar to that, but you use the ball that is um, being blocked to clear that pocket and try and pot it at the same time. Now this is probably the hardest of the three and there's lots of room for it to go wrong. Basically what I mean is if we can hit the red first, get the red to travel into the yellow, the yellow goes in and then the red goes in as well. So we're still in control of the table. So say we were somewhere like this, we could do that in such a way that we're running over here and we're leaving ourselves on this red back to the middle. The problems are that you've got to hit it very straight. If this red catches the yellow slightly to either side, it's not going to follow it in. And it's also got to have enough momentum to keep rolling forward to go into that pocket. The tendency is to try and hit the, people tend to think you've got to hit these hard because I need this ball to keep moving. And that's not always the case. It, it, I've made other videos about potting two balls into one pocket and there are lots of factors that come into play like how far apart the balls are, how far one ball is from the pocket etc. Um, but it's not always about hitting it hard because you can end up stunning this ball almost. You just want it to have a little bit of forward momentum and run forward. But I mean I'll have a go here and it might not work. You'll see how you know it's not that, that easy. So we try and be nice and straight and get that ball to have some forward momentum. And it's followed it into the pocket just and we've left ourselves in control so we've potted that ball and we've got position on the next shot so it's better than the previous um, option because we've got position the problem with it is obviously if it goes wrong so say we did the same thing again and we're trying to come over here to get position and we don't quite get it right and it doesn't follow it in, it's simply a loss of turn. But look where we've now left the yellow player. The yellow player is now on one of their balls and they're in a good position. So you have to be careful with it because it's not a high percentage shot. There are always chances of it going wrong. Um, as I said, it might either, it might not roll far enough or if you're slightly off, if it's at a slight angle, it's not going to go in. Also, you remember if this ball is not really in the heart of the pocket, if this ball is over to the side and we're at this sort of angle, you're not going to get that ball to follow that ball in because it's got to hit it at an angle itself anyway. It's not going to follow that ball in afterwards. So whilst that can be a good option, you have to be very careful with it and, and consider your chances of success. But you can see compared to world rules, there's no real advantage in covering that pocket because your opponent has got lots of ways of sorting it out. So whereas in world rules you might cover a pocket to try and take control of the table, it doesn't really have that advantage in um, international rules. Um, but you've got to think about it and do something about it and, as I said, try and do something about it early whilst there are other problems on the table. Don't leave it till the end when there's only a couple of balls left because then it makes your life a lot harder. 
So hopefully that um, covers how to go about sorting out covered pockets under international rules. Just a quick shout out to our sponsors, Table Time Sports. They're an online retailer selling pool cues, balls, accessories and pool tables. There's a link to their website above and if you purchase anything, as a pool school viewer, you'll grab an extra 5% off all purchases along with free delivery. And all you need to do is enter the code POOLSCHOOL5 in the discount section. If you want to see more practice routines and pool tutorials, then please remember to subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the equipment I use in this video, then there are links in the description below.